Good afternoon, hunters, and welcome back to the Gunners Guild. I'm going to do something a little bit different today and actually try to help out a little bit. I'm going to cover roar dodging and stagger thresholds. Learning and mastering these two techniques is going to make you a much better player overall, regardless of the monster you fight or what weapon you use. So with roars. Surprisingly, there are people who don't know that you can dodge roars. Dodge have iframes. Dodging roars is an essential skill to know because getting hit by two or three roars a fight is going to reduce your time significantly and also you can get one hit KO by wombo combos from arc temper monsters thanks to roars. To start practice roar dodging, I'd suggest going against any of the flying wyverns. These are the Rathalos and Rathian family, Haluumu, Legiana, and Basil, Goose, and Diablos. They fall into this category but they have two roars which makes them a little bit harder to deal with. Anyway, flying wyverns. These monsters have very distinct visual cues when they roar. Each one will take a step with their left foot at the moment you need to dodge. Every single one does it, every single time. Again, Basil, Goose, and Diablos have two roars, so you kind of have to know that one, but still. It's going to take some practice, but dodging roars is so much easier on world than the past games, you'll get it down, trust me. If you're going to be doing speedruns or just want to practice dodging to get better at the game in general, Hit up the arena and do some Rathalos or Rathian. These guys are toad to my favorite test dummies. It's easy once you know when they're going to roar so you can prepare for it. Obviously the first one is right as soon as they see you or you hit them. So you don't want to overcommit to an attack and get stuck in an attack animation when the roar is coming. You can hit the monster, wait for that step, and then continue. The second roar, which is the enraged roar, usually hits at about 400 damage done to the monster, but it varies from monster to monster. X has made a table that will tell you the damage that you need to do to enrage a monster. You can check it out on his Twitter. Let's just say it's 400 damage. So if you can add the numbers or just think to yourself, okay this hit does 160 damage, so if I hit him 3 times, he's gonna roar. Thinking like that, you'll have a much better time at guessing the enrage roar and being able to dodge it accurately. Most monsters have similar enrage roars to their standard roars, but things like Basil Goose and Diablos can do different animations, so be aware. Other monsters have similar tells like drinking their head forward or something else like that. You're going to have to find out what works for you. Hell, some people use audible cues even. Now for Diablos and Bagel Goose, their roars, they kind of point their head up and then do like an arcing screech. Diablos' visual cue is not clear enough to me though, and to be honest, it's just very difficult for me to dodge. I just kind of time it with my head and guess most of the time. However, you can do a pretty decent audible cue, and I'll try to show that as best as I can. Basil is kind of the same boat, but the audible cube doesn't work here. You just kind of have to get a feel for the timing. I'm not really good on basil roars. Also, I'm not going to cover all the roars because it's pretty much the same thing across the board. It's just based on skeleton type, really. But you get the idea. This should at least get you in the habit of being aware of the roar cues. It's going to take a lot of practice to get down, and hell, I can't even do all the roars all the time now. Learning to dodge roars is hugely important to getting better in general. If you have a hard time dodging them, I'd suggest throwing on an evasion mantle and do it that way because that gives you a huge window to work with. And then once you get that down, you could put on an evasion charm for evade window 3. This is going to add a few frames to your roll. It's noticeable and can really help pin down those times. From there, just roll with no evasion skills. Practice will make perfect, at least in theory. Again, I'm not perfect, that's for damn sure. So the second skill you're going to need to master is knowing stagger thresholds. As you damage a monster, that damage is going to build up a stagger threshold, and when you cross over that threshold, it will stagger the monster and reset the number. Unlike other statuses, this threshold does not increase. These staggers can also be built up over each of the hit zones. So for example, if a Rathalos has a head stagger of 400 damage, then you need to deal 400 damage to the head and it will cause the Rathalos to stagger, and then it will reset the counter to 400. If you had dealt 399 damage to the head, and then hit it again for 300, it'll still reset to 400. There's not going to be a bleed over here. Also, if you deal 200 damage to his head and then 200 damage to his wings, it's not going to cause a stagger because each part is independent. 
The wings will hold that 200 damage, so if you go back and hit the head for 200 and cause a stagger, you can go back to the wings and finish the wings off and get another stagger. Some attacks will still cause more buildup than the actual numbers show, like Gun Lance and Arc Shot, but don't worry too much about that right away. It gets more complicated, but just getting into it, just look at the numbers and try to keep track of your hits. Flinches on airborne monsters will cause a dunk, which is obviously the best thing ever, and knowing when the next hit will cause a stagger will help you get those dunks so much better. You can find the flinch values based upon the quest, unfortunately you're going to need to do some cross-referencing. Kiraniko has the base staggered values on the body parts for all the monsters, but these are all modified by the quest, which Hex has also put together and you can again find that on his Twitter. You can find these values, but you mostly just need to know the head, or maybe the legs for a trip. So knowing your stagger values and how many hits it takes to cause a flinch will help you outplay the monster and take more calculated risks rather than just kind of blindly swinging. It's also really nice knowing that the next hit's going to cause a dunk, and it all goes as you had planned. Trust me, it feels way better than that random dunk. I'd recommend again practicing on the flying wyverns, that way you can do roar and flinch practice at the same time. For Rathalos, he's always going to fly up after the first roar, so you can get a hit or two in before and after the first roar, and then you can set up the stagger when he's in the air. He often puts his head down on ground level where you can bop him on the nose and get that dunk. Even Azure Rathalos does it, but it's a little less frequent. For Rathian, you'll have to wait for her to do a flip for the most part, but she's got good openings too. Remember each time you go over the threshold while a monster's down, it will reset and roll over, but not cause another stagger. You can't stagger stack, a lot of staggers and other different heart breaks and stuff have a priority that one overlaps the other, and a downed monster won't get staggered, but you can still KO it. So if you want to get into stagger locking, you're going to have to keep track of the hits while it's down as well, but again, don't fret about this too much right off the bat. Getting a consistent first dunk is a great step forward. Just be conscious of how much damage you've been doing even while a monster's down. Again, practice will make perfect, but usually after the first dunk, it's just a shot in the dark for me on whether or not the second dunk's coming. Unless I'm using something consistent like Glutton, I usually have no idea. If you get the roars down and know your hits to flinch, flying wyverns become a breeze. They're very abusable, and I highly recommend using them as training dummies as well. Paying attention to those damages and staggers is really hard, and I don't expect everyone to really pay too much attention to that, but it's just a good thing to have in the back of your mind. For me, fighting a monster and then just keeping track of hits in my head makes it a lot less stressful just because I can tell when a monster is going to go down. But again, I don't expect everyone to do that. Now I had planned on doing a play by play of some runs to break down how to run each monster. I'm not really sure if that matters or if people really care about that. Let me know if you think I should do it because if it's not worth my time then whatever. But anyway, that's all for now. Thanks for watching Hunters. Good luck out there.